Okay, so this is going to be an interesting tutorial, not least because we're going to talk through the first of our required practicals, assuming you've taken these tutorials in chronological order, that is. Now, before I get into the task, which you can see is going to be just down here, I want to introduce you to, or I guess it re-familiarise you with, really, the, the microscope that you're going to be using to undertake this task. So a couple of things. Let's quickly fly through it. Here we have our eyepiece. Remember that the eyepiece has what we refer to as an eyepiece lens an eyepiece lens and that eyepiece lens typically and very likely to be on the um, microscope i keep wanting to say microphone because my microphone is literally right in front of me as i do this so it comes out that way anyway so we've got a lens within our eyepiece which is times 10 or 10 times magnification now the other lens that we have or the other lenses i should say are here the objective lenses and here we typically have three objective lenses we see those in the image here and very likely they're going to be four times magnification they're going to be 10 times magnification and they're going to be 40 times magnification that's what you're typically going to be working with a couple of other features we have the stage here here is our stage, and of course this can move up and down if we use our focusing dials, more of which in a few moments second, in a few moments time. We've also got the clips here. Notice the clips, there are one, two clips. We must use both to secure our specimen, more of which in a few moments time. As I said a moment ago, we have our focusing areas, or our focusing tools. Over here we have our coarse focusing dial, here it is. Okay, just be aware that I'm probably going to refer to this as the course, the course focusing knob for the rest of this tutorial because it's the term I tend to use. And here we've got the fine focusing dial. Here it is in the middle on our example. And again, just don't be surprised if we refer to it as a knob rather than a dial. Finally, we have the lamp, which of course emits light here. And that light is ultimately what illuminates our specimen. So just re-familiarize yourself with those features. Now, that being assumed, I want to immediately introduce you to the task. And in my opinion, it's one, of, one that it might seem kind of simple, but it's one I really want you to focus your detail and attention on. You are going to do the following. Use a light microscope to observe, draw, and label a selection of plant and animal cells. And you are going to learn how to use a magnification scale in order to do that as accurately as possible. Now, to do that, we have to follow a series of processes, which I'm going to talk you through now. But before we look at the processes, I want to introduce you to what we're referring to as James's tips or James's top tips. Please, you probably going to find these kind of silly things almost like you know of course I'm going to do it that way follow these protocols and I'm confident you will get a good outcome in this practical also I think it's about taking pride in your work as well I think it's about getting the detail and the emphasis and the and the the preparations to what they should be to make this accurate and precise and that's what you should be expecting of yourself i'm sure it is so here's what you're going to do number one you are going to use a sharp pencil rummage around in that pencil case find that pencil sharpener get that pencil nice and sharp secondly you must use clear continuous lines okay so make that nice and clear in your illustrations Thirdly, do not shade or color. We're going to be drawing ultimately, I guess, what will be an outline image uh, in this environment. Fourthly, draw label lines with a ruler, nice and straight. I'm actually going to break that rule in this tutorial because I'm going to freehand it a little bit. And no arrowheads, please. So in biology, we don't use arrowheads. We use straight lines. Fifthly, ensure label lines touch the structure. So whatever it is you're labeling, make sure that the line actually touches that thing. Um, and sixthly, ensure that label lines do not cross. Now, I've already broken one of these. I wonder if you know which one it is. I already broke one of those up here. And I'll let you kind of criticize me as much as you want to. But those are the tips we're going to follow. Now, what is the process we are going to follow? Let's go through it. Okay, so first of all, when we are ready to start our practical, we're going to start like this. We are going to clean our lens with a lens tissue. If you don't have one on your, um, on your table, ask for one and get that cleaned up. Secondly, we are going to place the prepared slide onto the stage and we're going to secure it using both clips. Don't underestimate the importance of this term here, both clips. We've got one, we've got two. We're going to use both to secure it so that we've got a nice, nice stable specimen. Thirdly, 
we're going to select the lowest power objective lens and click that into position. So it must be clicked into position. And because it's the lowest power, it's likely to be the four times magnification lens that you're going to use first. Okay. On most microscopes, that will be the case. So you're going to click it into position and you're going to use the lowest power lens first. Next, and this is perhaps where very frequently things will go wrong but this is where we want you to be really hyper accurate looking from the side now so we're not looking through the eyepiece we're not looking down through the microscope looking from the side now gently turn the course adjustment knob until the lens is just above the slide so basically we're using the course adjustment which of course was here and what we're doing ultimately is we're bringing the stage up until there's very little distance between the lens itself and the specimen but importantly we do not allow them to touch, which is exactly why you're looking from the side so that you don't allow that touching to take place. Next in our process, number five, look down now through the eyepiece lens. I'll look down through the eyepiece, I should say, and adjust the course dial downwards until focus. So now what we're going to do is, again, we're using the course dial or the course adjustment knob, I should say. And what we're doing now is we're now bringing the stage down until we get a focused image, okay? So that's what we're doing. It's important that we adjust downwards in this stage. Next, we're now gonna start focusing on, we're now start, we're gonna start using the fine adjustment knob. So we're now gonna take the fine adjuster. And what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna tweak and play with that until we get the best image, the sharpest image that we can find, okay? So we're just gonna tweak that. And just notice this point here. If need be, we're gonna recenter the prepared slide or we're gonna adjust it so it's in the correct position to get that best image. You just need to be prepared to do that at this stage. And finally, 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 we're gonna rotate the nose piece, the nose piece, to click the higher power lens into position. And then what we do is we adjust again on the fine adjustment knob to get that sharp focus with now a more magnified image. And if you follow that process, you're gonna get really clear, clean, and hopefully sharp images and views of cells that you're ultimately going to draw. So I guess what we've done here is we've talked a lot about the process of observing it, doing that correctly. Up here with the tips, we've talked quite a bit about the drawing and the labeling haven't we okay so now we've got a good picture of, of what is required now just a couple of things we've mentioned about there needing to be a magnification scale so i just want to take you through just one very simple calculation on that okay so let's just get this nice and clear we're interested in calculating what we're going to refer to as total magnification okay total magnification okay and we're going to calculate it in the following ways in the following way sorry total magnification is the magnification, the magnification of the objective lens, and of course that can change because we can use different power ones. So the magnification of the objective lens multiplied, not added to, not divided by, multiplied by the magnification, magnification of the eyepiece lens. Magnification of the eyepiece lens, the eyepiece lens lens okay so it's important that we understand that now if we just look at a very simple example of that that means that total magnification in the way i just described it just a moment ago what do we have we use the four times lens and we multiplied that by the eyepiece lens which was 10 times which gives us a total magnification of i'm sure you'll agree with me 40 times so in other words the image that we're seeing through the eyepiece is 40 times larger than it is as a real object okay so it's multiply oh sorry it's magnifying by 40 times to allow us to view it and of course that gets greater as we progress through the objective lenses now what would we expect to see then and what and what ultimately do, do your drawings and, and your labeling need to represent well over here we've got some animal cells i believe these are cheek cells which have been dyed blue so we can see the features so we've got some animal cells here what do we really want to encourage you to spot when you're labeling when you're drawing and labeling this well definitely look out for the nucleus now of course i should be using a ruler here but i'm going to do it freehand with a nice straight line you are going to draw excuse me a second you are going to, with a nice straight line you are going to draw until your label line hyper straight is going to touch that nucleus you may indeed um, 
identify two, okay? Now, we also might be able to identify, in fact, you're pretty likely to be able to identify the cytoplasm. So again, let me just take this as an example, the super straight line you're gonna have, and we're gonna label the cytoplasm in that way. And we should also comfortably be able to make out in our animal cells the cell membrane. So here, if I take the cell membrane as being just there, there we can label it with a nice, perfectly straight label. No labels, line, no label lines are crossing. No label lines have arrowheads, and we can illustrate those things in our drawing. Now, with our plant cell, we're going to see some different things. So, we've got some example. We've got an example here of some plant cells. Specifically, these, these are onion cells. So, what might we expect to see over here? Well, again, we can see a nucleus for sure. That is definitely the case nice straight line and we can um, label it as such. We can also clearly ma make out the cell wall. Okay, so here, nice straight line and the cell wall. We can also identify the cytoplasm. Okay, so this is fairly clear. Okay, the cytoplasm in there. Now, I'd also encourage you, especially as you increase magnification, to see if, you, again, depends on what type of cell you're looking at, see if you can identify and label any chloroplasts and see if you can identify and label the permanent vacuole, again, depending on the cell types that you're viewing. Okay, so you should be able to incorporate those labels into your images as well. And I said before, don't forget to reference the magnification that you've used when undertaking your drawing. Now, to finish off with, let's have a look at some key language which we've touched on within this tutorial. So let's just quickly go through it. Microscopy, I didn't actually mention that, it's the, the, the process of using microscopes. Like microscope, we have, I don't know why I labeled that, that number one. Like microscopes, we've had a look at a detailed stage. It's almost like the platform that the spe specimen sits, uh, sits in, sits on, sorry. The clips hold it in position. The lamp illuminates from below. The objective lens, typically we've said there's three of them, four times, 10 times, 40 times on, in most cases. The eyepiece, which of course contains the eyepiece lens and is how we view our specimens through the mic microscope. The coarse focusing knob, initially we, br we use that to bring the stage up to the objective lens and then we adjust it downwards until we get a clear picture. The fine focusing knob allows us to get the best image possible by adjustment. The prepared slide is where our specimen will sit and finally the magnification which we know is the magnification of the objective lens multiplied by the magnification of our eyepiece lens. Some great terminology for you to use.